I state your name. I, G.T. Bynum. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support, obey, and defend. That I will support, obey, and defend. The Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the State of Oklahoma. The Constitution of the State of Oklahoma. And the Charter of the City of Tulsa. And the Charter of the City of Tulsa. And that I will not. And that I will not. Knowingly receive. Knowingly receive. Directly or indirectly. Directly or indirectly. Any money. Any money. Or other valuable thing. Or other valuable thing. For the performance. For the performance. Or non-performance. Or non-performance. Of any act or duty. Of any act or duty. Pertaining to my office. Pertaining to my office. Other than the compensation allowed by law. Other than the compensation allowed by law. I further swear. I further swear. That I will faithfully discharge my duties. That I will faithfully discharge my duties. As mayor of the city of Tulsa. As mayor of the city of Tulsa. To the best of my ability. To the best of my ability. Congratulations. Thank you, Judge. Start today the same way I started four years ago. I want to thank God for this chance to do his work in the world. I hope that I'll be worthy of the task that he's given me over the next four years. I want to thank my light, my wife, Susan, our kids, Robert and Annabelle, my mom and sisters and all of our family for their love and support. I want to thank my grandfather for being my lifelong role model in public service and in life. I want to thank my friends on the Tulsa City Council and our city auditor, my partners in all that we will do. I also want to acknowledge the unusual circumstances of this speech. Four years ago, it was delivered to hundreds of friends and family in a joint ceremony at the Central Library. This year, it's just us on this video feed. No mayor of Tulsa has ever been sworn in this way before, but this is no ordinary time. We remain in the midst of a global pandemic, and I want to use this opportunity to thank all the men and women working to treat COVID patients in our region. I hope you know how grateful this city is for your work. A hundred years ago this year, Joe and Gertrude LaFortune arrived on a train in Tulsa without much more than their Catholic faith in one another. The children of immigrant families. They came to Tulsa because it offered opportunity. Joe sought work by going to the top floor of each office building in town and then working his way down each floor, inquiring in every office for a job. And at the end of that search, he had two job offers, one with a hardware store and one with the Tulsa World. 50 years later, the headline in the Tulsa World was that their youngest son had been elected mayor of Tulsa. And he went on to be the best mayor that this city ever had. 50 years after that, today, Joe and Gertrude LaFortune's grandson is the presiding judge for Tulsa County, and their great-grandson was just sworn in for a second term as the mayor of Tulsa. This is how I think about the history of our city. It's a city of families and the lives that they lead through generations. I think about dairy farmers who came to Tulsa because they saw opportunity here. Today, their daughter is being sworn in for her fifth term as our city auditor. I think about an idealistic young couple who came to Tulsa because of the opportunity to serve in the nonprofit world. I think about another young couple, teachers from Western Oklahoma, who came to Tulsa because of the opportunity that they saw in Tulsa public schools. Each of those young couples raise their kids here. And today, their sons are being sworn in as the two newest members of the Tulsa City Council. In every important thing that we do as a community, there are stories like this. The stories of families seeking opportunity and building this city for the next generation, one generation at a time. Right now, there are many outside forces that seek to divide us as Tulsans. A global pandemic that isolates us from one another, 
social media algorithms that stoke our outrage to keep our attention on their platforms. Political parties that have made the cynical conclusion that anger and tribalism turn out more voters for their side than compromise and progress. And for the last four years, we've tried to make Tulsa a citadel amidst community destroying forces like this. And for much of that time, we've been a national model, but sometimes we've come up short. As we approach the centennial of Tulsa's worst day, we should all be reminded that division, hatred of them, insistence on seeing the worst in people with whom we disagree, these have all led historically to loss and regret and shame for our city. So today, in this holiday season, when we're thinking of the people that we love the most, let's renew our city's focus on what historically brought us opportunity and achievement and advancement working together to build a better city for our families, our friends, and our neighbors. Over the next four years, working together, we will make Tulsa a safer city. We will establish Tulsa as a city of greater and more equal opportunity. We will grow our economy. We will construct public works that benefit future generations of Tulsans. We will build the best city government in America. And we will transform higher education in Tulsa. In short, we will continue to build a globally competitive world-class city, striving on behalf of the next generation of Tulsans, just as those who came before us did for us. We're not a city of Republican Tulsans and Democrat Tulsans, or white Tulsans and black Tulsans, or lifelong Tulsans and immigrant Tulsans. We're a city of families, of neighbors, just people trying to work together and build a better life for the people that we love. And we can do more for them by working together. And in the next four years, we will. Thank you.